The 2024 Olympics were insane. The Last Supper fiasco, the Turkish sharpshooter, the Simone Biles comeback, the viral crotch video of that French pole vaulter, the 2024 Olympic memes were epic and abundant. Because there's so much attention on these games, there's obviously a massive marketing opportunity for brands. But if you're not careful, that opportunity can blow up in your face, which is exactly what happened to McDonald's in 1984 when they pissed off millions of customers and lost tens of millions of dollars in the process with their Olympics promotion. And before I get into the details of their disastrous campaign, let me set the stage a little bit. In the background of the Paris games, you could see Chase's luxurious river lounge and Anheuser-Busch showing off their non-alcoholic beer. In retrospect, the scene wasn't that much different in 1984 in LA. The US was fresh off of a hiatus after skipping the summer games in 1980 in Moscow. To say tensions were high would be a massive understatement. The US boycotted the Olympics in 1980 as a protest against Russia's invasion of Afghanistan. They weren't alone either. Several big names with major athletes skipped the show. This meant Russia and the Soviet bloc walked away with tons of medals, just about all of them. In comes 1984. America was the host boasting the city of LA as their destination. After watching medal after medal go to their rivals in 1980, American athletes were ready for their revenge. To put it frankly, American teams we're loving it. So naturally, McDonald's chimed in with a massive sponsorship. The campaign was dubbed, when the US wins, you win. The giveaway was hosted through a scratch off card. When a customer ordered anything at McDonald's, whether it be one small fry or dinner to feed the whole family, they got a scratch card. They would scratch it to reveal an Olympic event. Say you went out for lunch with a few friends. You scratched your card and revealed men's 400 meter hurdles. You went home and watched Edwin Moses take home the gold in that event. And then you returned to McDonald's and handed over your card. Because the US won gold, you won a fresh, free Big Mac. This promotion obviously aimed to drive traffic to stores and solidify the longtime partnership between McDonald's and the Olympics. At the same time, McDonald's was positioning itself as a proud American staple in a time when patriotism was high. And this idea wasn't brand new to them. In the 1976 Olympics in Canada, McDonald's ran a similar promotion as a sponsor of the games, and it worked exceedingly well. Looking at the cost of the promotion in 76, compared to the increase in revenue, they could safely assume it was worth the investment again. They paired these numbers to the number of medals the US won in 1976. At the end of all the math, running this campaign in the US for 84 looked really good on paper, and people really liked it. It was fun, got attention, and much like their famous Monopoly game, ushered in customers with ease. But there were a few key factors that went overlooked. First, the US only won 94 medals in the 1976 Olympics, with only 34 of those being gold. Gold medals, and in turn Big Macs, were a major loss leader here. But with those odds, it seemed worth it. Second, they seem to completely overlook how fired up the American athletes and fans would be in 1984. After all, they were returning after missing an entire set of games in the middle of a hot political environment. People were hungry for revenge. So they took the jump to roll it out nationwide for America's return as host in 1984. They created a massive marketing campaign to get the word out. People started flocking to McDonald's just for the sake of getting these cards. And millions of Americans had their cards ready to go when the torch was lit, highlighting the schedules for each event that could earn them a treat from the Golden Arches. As the ads rolled across the screen, people got to talking about it more and more. Really, the campaign created a spark similar to a viral TikTok today. People were on board and ready. When Alexi Gruel took gold for the first event, men's road race cycling, people cheered. America was back, ferocious, and going to get a lot of free Big Macs. Then Connie Carpenter Finney took gold in the women's road race cycling event. Cue more cheers, more excitement, and more Big Macs. The story continues in this fashion, event, metal, cheer, McDonald's. Customers began making jokes about the fast food chain, which only brought more attention to the drastic events happening at order counters across the nation. Despite the chaos and the massive cost, McDonald's continued the promotion instead of pulling it. Pulling the plug during such a proud moment in American history was sure to mean that the reputation of their golden arches would get tarnished. Then they started running out of inventory. Fans would flock to the nearest location, only to be met with disappointment. 
The stores were out of fries, buns, and Coca-Cola was nowhere in sight. Across the country, fans were reveling in the major U.S. victories and getting hungry in the process. As soon as trucks would unload supplies, they would go right out the door to customers, leaving locations forced to close or turn customers down. Around 6,600 stores reported closing or limiting menus due to a lack of promotional items, one of which was the company's namesake, the Big Mac. Keep in mind that all of this traction that was forcing restaurants to close was still coming in at a loss. Because of the free promotion, customers were getting the Olympic victory prize and walking right out the door without needing to pull out their wallets at all. At the end of the games, the U.S. boasted 84 gold medals, 61 silver, and 30 bronze, a whopping 174 total medals. A McVictory to say the least. They keep the exact results of the promotion a secret, but they have admitted it was the most costly marketing campaign in the company's history. Researchers and financial experts estimate that it cost them several millions of dollars. McDonald's went on to run similar promotions for the Seoul 1988 Olympics, but this time they gave out promotional pins and cups instead. This helped bring customers back to the store without completely wiping out their top selling products. They continued these campaigns, adding plates and other McDonald's Olympic products for each set of games. After learning their lessons, the campaigns were extremely successful. Maybe not enough to make up for the multi-million dollar loss in 88, but they're McDonald's. They aren't going anywhere. Still, the stunt has been a talking point in marketing classes, Olympic conversations, and even The Simpsons. It's all part of our Krusty Burger Olympic sweepstakes. Just scratch off the name of the Olympic event on your game card, and if America wins a gold medal, you win a free Krusty Burger. Mm, mm. Mmm. And cut. How much are these free burgers gonna cost me? Let's see. You personally stand to lose $44 million. It goes to show that just because a marketing campaign reaches your intended audience and they take action on it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you win. If you want more stories like this, tap that like button somewhere down there and subscribe for more.